Well, it's a win, 1-0. It wasn't, wasn't pretty, but uh, we, we got the win. Proud of guys' ability to, to kind of stay in there and, and fight off the bad start. And rally had a great second quarter. I would have loved for us to play clean ball four quarters. Didn't happen. A lot of new players playing. You know, we were just talking about just how many guys, I think 20, 21 guys, played their first snap for us. That's a lot of, a lot of new bodies to get everybody moving in the same direction. But we uh, they stayed poised, didn't freak out with a bad start, played extremely hard. I think that was one of the coolest things is watching even when we gave up a couple big runs or explosive plays, watching our defense chase the ball down, watching the way our O-line played hard, especially late in the fourth quarter, not giving the ball back to UConn and being able to run the ball and kind of finish the game off. So a lot of good, uh, big key things that, that we really have to work on. Uh, we can't put the ball on the ground, obviously. We ran the ball better than we did probably at any point last year against a big, big front. Those guys were built well. Um, but we we can't put the ball on the ground. We, we've we got to tackle better. I, I think we had somewhere around 15, 16 missed tackles. Several of those in the third quarter on third down situations where we could have got them off the field and got the ball back to the offense and maybe stretched that thing out when we had it uh, to a two-score lead. Uh, th- those those were huge. We we I thought we made adjustments in game in the other areas, but balls on the ground, couple key drops too, critical situations, third down type situations that could have moved the ball for us offensively. Couple drops that we we got to make some catches. So plenty to work on, but we found a way to win. Uh, I thought UConn did a good job. They did not make a bunch of mistakes. They played um, played physical football up front. They're built well on both O line and D line. But uh, as the game went on, you could tell they got tired and we didn't. Uh, that's the one thing that came out of fall camp. The guys are in good shape. They held up to the heat, played better as the game went on. As they got tired, we didn't. And that's still got to be something that we can hang our hat on this season because we're going to play some big folks. We're going to play some guys that that um, that are going to be, you know, struggle to move early. And hopefully we can, we can fatigue them and move them later. Um, it does not get any easier. We're going to go play the, maybe the best team on the planet. They, they look – there's just no weaknesses. There just aren't. A uh, huge challenge for our guys. We've got to focus on us, focus on getting better. We cannot focus on Alabama this week or we'll we'll go in starry-eyed and look up and, and it'll be halftime and the game will be be over. We've uh, we got to focus on getting better. We've got to reduce the missed tackles. We've got to reduce the turnovers, a couple penalties, a couple critical mistakes – we got to play our best football to have a chance to be in this game. And, and that's really all we can focus on all week. That's going to be the message to the guys, already is, to uh, to let's improve. Let's work to get better. Let's go try to make a game of this. And the only way to do that is play our best ball. So we'll see if that gives us a chance to play with these guys. Um, you won't know till you get there. But if you don't play your best ball, I know exactly how it'll go, and none of us will like it. So we're going we're gonna to focus on improvement. What questions do you have? I saw uh, Prokesi in a walking booth this weekend. What is his status? Is he is he uh, available at all? It, it, it's day to day. He's been dealing with this all summer. Uh, it is not something that can be fixed. It is something that we have to manage. He was doing really really well. Had had a few days out any issues, changed shoes and flared up. So it's just a it's a nagging foot issue that was not ready on game day. I would love to think he'll be ready this week. Uh, if not, I, I do feel like we've got a real legitimate chance to have him back at home here in a couple of weeks to play. And it does look like it is something that we can, you know, maneuver and manage throughout the course of the season. Uh, but he, he's got to kind of tough it out too. And so you're asking a lot of the kid to, to kind of fight through some discomfort. You mentioned after the uh... – game press conference that you thought guys were a little bit too excited and that was sort of the issue with the uh, the, the run defense. Having now gone back and watched the game and, and gone through the film, is that still your takeaway or were there maybe different issues? Well, a little bit. We, we were a little upfield, a little – I think it was a little different than what we expected them to look like. That had a little bit to do with it. Uh, we were we were flying and, and jetting upfield in some areas we should have been squeezing and, and playing things a little slower. So, yeah, it was a little bit of both. Didn't see exactly what we anticipated to see from them. We didn't adjust immediately to it. We were geeked up and flying and really over-pursuing, and almost every one of their runs cut back behind the grain of 
a fast flow, and then we were upfield a little bit. Again, trying to get to the quarterback. As we settled down and kind of started playing the technique a little bit more soundly and made a couple of adjustments, we obviously played a lot better. I think 100-plus, maybe 150 yards of rushing in the first quarter as compared to like 90 or 95 the rest of the game. So settling down and, and adjusting were both needed. And, and well, honestly, we just need to tackle better. Quite honestly, I had opportunities to to get them on the ground. And when you miss 15, 16, 17 tackles, you're, you're not going to be happy about much other than just the result of the score. Hey, Coach. Sean J. Salas, the Nike Sports Radio Network. I know you talked about your team not being starry eyed going to Bama, but what do you tell them about going into an atmosphere of 100,000 sold out crowd? It's going to be loud. You know that. And just handling a different environment, probably something that they've never seen in their lives. Yeah, I mean, enjoy it. Heck, man, who gets an opportunity to do that? Who gets an opportunity to line up and strap up with 100,000 people in the stands? So don't don't let it intimidate you. Let it fuel you. Really just still – your stadium's going to still be the same length and, you know, we're still going to have to do the same things. But let that be an excitement. Don't, don't let it um, – don't let it distract you from just doing the little things right. That's easier said than done, obviously, Ajay. But, but we've got to find that simplicity in the electric chaos of what the environment's going to be. Just line up, play ball, throw and catch, tackle, and 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 try to improve this week. And we'll we'll see if we can do that. That, that is a it is a challenge for everybody that goes down there. Not. Uh, not just early in the season, but late. Hopefully our guys will get fired up, excited, play their best ball. Coach? Coach, Brian Phillips, Big Blue USU Aggie News. Uh, how do you feel coming off the injury in the bowl game uh, last year that Logan Bonner performed? Well, three touchdowns and, and pretty high completion percentage. Hadn't got hit a few times and got back up, even though I think he was – it was a little shaky a couple times. First time he's been hit since the bowl game. He's been a red jersey off all camp. I, I thought he – there's a couple throws he'd like to have back. I think we threw it 29 times. He was 20 or 21 of 29. Should have probably been 25 of 29. So uh, critical in the fact that he missed a few. But the fact that he played in the short amount of time that he's had to rehab and played at the level that he did, uh, and a couple of the throws he made were lights out, phenomenal throws. The, the touchdown throw to Kyle Van Leeuwen – we turned the defensive tackle completely loose. He's in his face when he gets rid of it. The throw, he set on his back foot to throw the touchdown pass to Cobb in the corner, knowing he's going to get hit, knowing pressure's coming. Uh, the the throw to uh, McGriff in the corner, I mean, you can't ask much better. So I'm pleased. I think he's only going to get more and more comfortable now that he's been bumped and bruised a couple times. Uh, going to get get better as we go. This this week will be its challenge in itself, obviously, but big picture. Pleased that we had him this early, and pleased that he played that well. Oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, Jason Turner from the Herald Journal. You know, the offensive line you were able to get back most in South and Aller, which you know I figured you probably would, but uh, you look good. On paper, you certainly look good, uh, but looking back at the film, how would you assess their performance? Oh, that was a good first step. We 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 protected the quarterback fairly well. Uh, you know, he got some late collisions, but we didn't turn anybody loose immediately. Uh, we didn't have guys just flying off the edge. I mean, we weren't picking him up all night off the turf. Now, it was a conservative game plan because we didn't know what to expect, and, and we, uh, we wanted to make sure we got a beat on it, but – I thought they protected him fairly well to run the ball like we did, especially the way we we it was struggle early to move those big. I mean, they are massive up front. It's hard to explain just the sheer size difference and length difference. It was noticeable, but as the game continued, we got better. So I, I thought it was a really good first step, not where we want to finish, but a great first step for us. And to be able to – run the ball the last five minutes of the game without having to put the ball in the air and run the clock out. That's something we really struggled to do at any point last year. If you think about the wins last year, we tended to have to put the defense back out, and and that was a step in the right direction. I mean, I know it's UConn and I want to keep it in perspective, but they're well coached and they were big. They were they were way bigger than we were. Uh, and so that's still – I got to give those guys credit. Had a freshman playing most of the night at right guard. Had Poule bounce in two different or three different positions. Um, I, I think it's I think it's something to build on. 
Franson with 106.9 The Fan talking about running backs uh, on the other side, Alabama. They've got a lot of depth at running back. What do you see in their run game? Is that was a bit of an issue trying to contain UConn's running attack? Yeah, it, the, the challenge is, is real. They just transferred in maybe the best running back in the country from Georgia Tech, put that behind maybe the best old line in the country and a quarterback that can do it all. Yeah, it, it's – again, you can – you can get overwhelmed by it. We've got to be lined up in the right gap, play great technique and tackle well to have a chance at slowing them down. You will not stop them. That's not happening. That's not with this game. This is slowing them down, frustrate them, hope they make a mistake, capitalize on any mistake that they do make, make them kick the ball some. Uh, if not, you'll look up and you look at these games in the past, these guys score 60. We want to keep the score down, make it a manageable game, give ourselves a chance to be in it, line up right, play great technique, play super hard, and tackle better than we did this week. And and that's that's really all you can ask. But, yeah, there's no weakness. Uh, and they, they just got better. They graduated, and since I – dudes to the NFL, and they just got better. Just went out and took a wide out from Georgia, took a running back from Georgia Tech. And they just got better. Nick Nielsen, KSL.com, you put – Cooper Jones on scholarship last week. Can you speak about that a little bit? Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty cool to be able to do. Um, we don't always have a spot available to put a walk on on scholarship. We had one, and Coop is one of those guys you love to be around every day. Uh, he's on scout team uh, as a running back every day, giving him uh, just unbelievable effort. He's been fighting to get on the field as a punt returner, kick returner, and – he, he won the job as the punt returner, being the most dependable. and He's got a knack for getting downhill. I thought we had two good opportunities to get him loose on Saturday, and one ball just didn't get to him. The other one, we, we busted up front, or we might have got him going. Uh, great kid, great teammate, everything that you want a teammate to be. Uh, nothing makes you happier than to be able to surprise a guy like that and reward him in his last year to, uh, to be able to take the burden off him and his family to pay for school. Um, so the guys – uh, the guys were super excited. It was a surprise for him and his family. A lot of tears in the room. They actually picked him up and carried him across the room at one point, which for him is not that difficult because he's not very big, but it was still a lot of fun. Hey, Coach Al at uh, KBNU. Can I ask you, Bryce Young's a returning Heisman Trophy winner, but they say Anderson's even a better player, the defensive guy. Can you talk about those two talented players for Alabama Woods? Well, they're – they're as advertised, uh, two of the best players in, in all the ball. Both will play at the next level, both on the short list for, for Heisman. You know, we're, we're going to see Will Anderson at his best. He played with a big knee brace on most of the last year. We, uh, we won't be so fortunate. He will be, he will be primed and ready to go. Uh, he's impossible to block. We either, we got to have help on him or we got to get it out quick. They know. We can't just stand up and expect our guys to block him one-on-one -on -one all day. we got to try to get him tired, fatigue him. Hopefully he's not in great shape yet. Um, you know, and, and Bryce can make every throw and can beat you with his feet. Obviously, clearly everybody, the whole, everybody in the country saw that a year ago. They are phenomenal players. And um, they're surrounded by a lot of phenomenal players too, so, which makes it even more difficult. If they're by themselves, it'd be one thing. But the guys right next to them to the right and left are just as good. So it, uh, it it amplifies the problem. John, Alex Behar with the Salt Lake Tribune. Uh, good afternoon. I'm curious kind of what your opinion is on on games. I guess they're called payout games. You know, programs that kind of get a, a good sum of money uh, coming into the university to go and, and play, you know, a big program. Um, this is one for you guys. What's kind of your opinion on, on just that practice? Well, I've spent most of my career playing in these kind of games. Um, I, it's a necessary evil. We've we got an athletic department that we've got to fund, and and this is something that we've got to do. It's, it's a game that's going to pay, uh, I don't know, the, the, the buyouts, I don't know, $1.9 million or something, $1.8 million. It's, it's, it's a lot of money that our, our athletic department needs to function on a daily basis. We're not, we're not a place that uh, can, uh, can do without this type of – game. So we know what, what it is and we know what we need to do. We also want to take an approach to go in and win it. We're going to, we're going to put together a game plan that if works perfectly, puts us in a, in a game. Uh, we've, um, 
We've seen these games in the past get out of hand. We've seen these games be competitive. And every once in a while, uh, this game goes opposite of what everybody thinks it's going to be. Uh, we can only can control us, though. we got to go play our best football. But but I understand the need for the game. Uh, I want our other departments, other programs to be able to to um, operate at, at um, you know full speed and at at, at a high level, and, and this is the cost of doing that at some point. And and so we're gonna go we're gonna go make the best of it. We have more of a fun question. Are you aware of the two men in New Jersey who put down two thousand dollar two thousand dollar bet for you guys to win the national championship? I, I I am aware of those guys. I have not met them. I've read this story. Um, I, I get a little bit of a chuckle out of it. I appreciate their uh, confidence in us. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I completely understand the bet, but hey, uh, man, it would it would pay off big. That that is, if you're a long shot guy, it would pay off big. Brian Priest, KSLSports.com. Um, I was just wanted to get your thoughts on the performance of your freshman running back Robert Brakes uh, this weekend. Yeah, it was. Uh, he was a pleasant spark. We've. We, we're excited about recruiting him. Glad to get him here. He has been um, – he's been one of those freshmen that hadn't acted like a freshman. <coughs> Very quickly could tell that physically he was ready for the challenge of, of banging into people at this level and, and, and kind of the physical toll that it would take. He's got speed that, that we really didn't have in the room. He's the fastest guy in the room. 10-5, 10, 10 600 meters, I think, in high school, which is rolling pretty quick. Um, but then I think just the moment has not been bigger than him. He's been a calm – he is just naturally a very calm young man and has, has picked up what we're doing offensively pretty pretty well. Uh, so it was, a, it was a pleasant spark. We need it. It's kind of something we didn't have a year ago. Uh, he is a little different than everybody else in the room in, in a good way, and you saw it um, – you saw it. Saturday runs low to the ground. He's built that way, low center of gravity. He's able to fight through the first, you know, contact, run his legs. He's got the burst and the speed to uh, break a big one. And I just thought he was very patient, stayed behind blockers. And it's kind of hard to see back there sometimes. He's not very big, so he kind of gets lost behind a big old lineman. I, I think he's going to be really, really helpful if we can keep him healthy all season. Obviously, Anderson's the standout linebacker, but they have two other guys, two other linebackers, ESPN's top 100 players for this season, linebackers. Uh, what do you see from that group collectively that that's a three in the top 54? That's, that's pretty big time. Well, I hope you're not going to go through the ranks of all their defensive players because I would assume that probably all of them are ranked somewhere extremely high. As I said, it's kind of redundant, man. You just – you can't get focused on it. If you do, if you turn the page and look at rankings and and all the measurables, they just – there are no weaknesses. There is, uh, you know, just a, a whole pile of great player versus great player versus great player. Um, yeah, the, every position is going to be the best position we see all year. Maybe the best positions I've seen in my lifetime as a coach. They're, they're as advertised. Huge challenge. Focus on what we can control. We're worried about who's in the jersey. Play our best ball. Don't do their work for them. Last time I was down there, the whole first quarter, all we did was make mistakes. The game was over by the end of the first quarter. And then we settled down and actually played pretty good ball. And I think we might have even out, outgained them in the second half. We just got to play good ball, play sound ball. The rest of it will take care of itself. But there is not a weakness. You look on the depth chart, they can all play. There's probably maybe some of their best players are guys nobody even knows their name yet. They just haven't had an opportunity to play enough yet. Uh, that's always the scary part. We'll expose or find somebody that nobody even knew was a future Hall of Famer, All American. They'll show up in a in a way none of us want them to. Hey, coach. Yep. And just how is uh, Ziggy Williams kind of handling this week? Just going up against his old team. Is that being overblown or? Uh, I think it's being overblown right now. I mean, he's just he's just trying to factor in for us. He played. Played some special teams the other day. Played a couple snaps on offense. You know, this is a guy that hadn't played ball in a year and a half due to an injury. I, I think he's just trying to get his legs underneath him and get on the field. Uh, I, I don't think he has anything to do with play. I mean, obviously, you love to go back against your your old teammates and your old friends and play well, but 
Uh, I think his challenge right now is just getting back on the field and playing at the level he's he's comfortable and capable of playing at, and, and he's just not there yet. So Alabama has nothing to do with it. Jal, again, I was going to ask you, I mean, personal, personally for you, to go up against the coach who's supposed to be maybe the greatest of all time, uh, what does that feel like getting prepared for this week's game? Uh, I, I've got to be the same as the players, man. Just focus on us. I, I just want to – you know, I, I'm, I, I love the idea of, of testing yourself against the best. There's, we all do. That's why we get into this. But the best thing I can do as a head coach is prepare our team to play their best ball. Um, you know, that, that, that's really keep it, keep it within what we can control. So if we go out, regardless of the score, if we go out and play our best game, then I've done my job. Um, if we go out and play our best game, the best game we are capable of playing, then, then we've done a great job as players and coaches, and that's really all we can focus on. If we focus on anything else, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to get outside of what we're capable of, and we're, we're going to make this uh, a game that we're all frustrated with. So that's that's the best thing I can do. Um, go into a, a great environment uh, against a Hall of Fame head coach and against Heisman Trophy winners, and man, go put a great team on the field and play our best and make them earn everything they get. Jake Ellis, uh, Utah Statesman. Um, Nick Saban in this press today said that a lot of improvement he, or teams will improve a ton from you know week zero to week one. You feel like playing that game is helping you prepare for this one, as you know if this was your opener. Well, I'd definitely hate to have been in Tuscaloosa on Saturday and play the way we played early. Um, I mean, I'm not sure the scoreboard has enough digits on it to handle what we would have given up uh, defensively and. Not sure we'd gotten a first down. So, yeah, being able to go out and play a game with with a team that that we were were better than than uh, and, and play ugly and still win by eleven is is a huge help to us. Now, is it enough? Heck, I don't know. Uh, but but we do have a chance to improve and get better and and maybe shake the the cobwebs off or maybe even the butterflies in some areas where guys haven't played. But um, but the challenge is still real. It's still going to be everything we want and more. So, um, but I, I'm I'm I feel better about playing game two instead of game one in this environment. Go ahead. All right. Um, Alex, with the Tribune again, just real quick. So your Arkansas State team played Alabama in 2018. Um, do you kind of take? Anything from that game, and do you kind of relay lessons from that or feelings from that, front, like, and kind of give it to your players now at Utah State? Yeah, I mean, the, the best thing to take away from that game was that we were um, mentally and emotionally overwhelmed in the first quarter, and we did things super uncharacteristic of who we were. Uh, we, uh, we had a corner blitz that ended up being a corner and a safety, and we turned a wide out completely loose, and they – the guy could have thrown it end over end for a touchdown. We we misaligned defensively on a play and had two gaps completely open. The guy didn't even have to change direction to run. Any. We did just really stupid things early. We look up, we're down 21. And then we decided to settle in and play, and we actually made them punt the ball. We moved the ball offensively. As I mentioned, I think we may have outgained them in the second half by just doing little things right. Now, it wouldn't have been enough to win the game, but it would have made a competitive game had we played that way the entire day. And we and who knows what happens then. That is what we take from that game. You must go in and play your game. You can't play theirs. you got to go in and play your ball, play the best ball you can, line up right, tackle, defend, throw and catch, put bodies on people, and let the game itself take over at that point. Uh, so, yeah, it's a great learning experience. I came back and showed film to that team, and I think we all just scratched our heads like, man, why did we do some of the things we did? We let the moment and the environment overwhelm us. And then when we settled in, we played pretty good football. We want to avoid that. That is what this group can learn. I think it doesn't hurt that Logan Bonner was right there in, that, in the mix in that group. He's been there. He's done it. Some of these guys hopefully will listen, and, and he'll be able to, to – um, Share from his experience, and, and hopefully that'll help us. Brian Phillips again. The speed and route running ability of Brock Lane would give you guys an extra 
to mention at tight end? Do you think we'll see him this week? I, I hope so. I, you know, what we don't want to do is, is push him before he's ready. He, he's been battling an injury that's it's kind of right on the verge. He obviously would play today if we let him, but we're trying to be smart. What we don't want is to put him out and re-aggravate it and miss him and lose him for another month. So it's going to be day-to-day, -day. Brian. I don't, I don't know if this is where he, he gets to start playing or if we hold him another week. It's going to have to be a week of practice without any hesitation in him at all before I'm ready to put him out. But, but it will be probably a Thursday or Friday type decision after watching him move can he handle the volume of practice every day? Can he stretch out and run 30 and 40 yards at a time? I, I'm not sure where he's at yet. It is a day-to-day -day decision. It's Brian Priest again with KSLSports.com. Speaking of pass catchers, what did you think of the performance out of your wide receivers? I know there were some questions about the wide receiver room coming into the year. I thought it was steady. I mean, we obviously made a couple of huge catches. Uh, both, uh, All three touchdown catches were – anything less than routine. Uh, Kyle Van Leeuwen, guy hanging on him, both um, McGriff and Cobbs, you know, toe-tap type uh, corner of the end zone touches that that are not easy. Um, I thought it was a really good step. We did have a couple uh, drops that that would have moved the chains in the third quarter, especially that, that would have, you know, I think given us a chance to stretch things out. So being critical, we can get better. But – with as many new bodies as we had playing that had not been in in, in that situation before, uh, I, I was pleased with, with the starting uh, point. I, I do think there's better ahead of us, uh, and, and hopefully, just kind of getting that first game under their belt will, will be will be you know helpful. I think I think Brian Cobb's obviously showed up in a big big way, over 100 yards, and and, and was uh, was so solid, but. Um, I think all those other guys, I mean, I might let one or two get away that I want to make sure uh, in the future, man, we make those plays. But uh, it, it's a group that that we can build on what we saw. One final question for Coach Anderson. You scared him to death. Nobody wants to ask. I just asked about John Gentry and his status for, uh, for Saturday. Yeah, day-to-day -day -day for him as well. Uh, dinged up. He was not ready Saturday, uh, I, I think. Similar conversation we just had about uh, Brock Lane. When is he ready to actually go out, stretch out, run long distance, and and, and without an issue, can he take the pounding uh, of of the game? So uh, I think he'll he'll be a day to day decision as well. Thanks, guys. Uh, Alex Nehar with the Salt Lake Tribune. How's it going? Good. How are you? Thanks for asking. Um, what do you remember about being a member of Arkansas State in 2018 when that team played against Alabama? Uh, yeah, uh, I remember I wasn't the starter um, back then, but I knew at some point I was going to be ready to play. I remember going in and um, that was their first home game off a national uh, national championship game after um, Tua had that crazy throw and came back in the second second half and stuff like that. So it was a fun atmosphere, um, really good team. Um, we're expecting to see the same thing this year. A uh, really good team, some of the best players on the planet, and uh, just really good opportunity to compete with the best. Jake Nielsen. Oh, sorry, Alex, go ahead. Yeah, I just had a real quick follow-up. Um, Logan, is there anything that you kind of take away from that game that you are kind of imparting on your Aggies teammates, you know, how it feels, the, the – um, you know, the, the offense, uh, the atmosphere, anything like that that you kind of been talking about? Yeah, uh, I basically just told them, guys, um, they're a good football team. Um, we're going to play a lot of good football teams this year, and they're they're one of the best, obviously. Everybody knows that. And so we just go in there, play our best ball. Uh, when we went in there, uh, I normally played the second half that, that game when we played them, and just go out there and don't be surprised when you make a play. Um, we're on scholarship, too. We can make plays, too. Just be – be confident and know your job and, and do your best and, and uh, see what happens. I think that uh, going there, try to be all, they were playing this team, this team, and you, you get beat before the, the game even starts. So I think that you just need to go in there and play ball and treat it like a regular game. Um, and there's no different. The field's still 100 yards long. Jacob Nielsen, KSL.com. After watching film from the Connecticut game, what's your biggest takeaway on your own personal performance on Saturday? 
Yeah, there was about three throws. Um, I really wanted back. Really uncharacteristic of me. Just trying to get it out a little quicker than normal. Um, just other than that, I thought I made a lot of good decisions. They were playing really soft. We had a lot of uh, stuff that we normally do called, and we had to get out of it. They gave us a really good run box, and we had to take care of uh, around the ball, and I think we did that really well. Um, but we, I thought I'd make good decisions overall during the game, and uh, I just probably there was like three throws I wanted back and probably would have uh, extended uh, the uh, drives a little longer. Logan, Ryan Phillips, Big Blue USU Aggie News. Yeah. You had several new targets to throw to this week. Uh, assess how you feel like the game went with those guys. Yeah, I think they did great. Um, obviously, a new group of guys in the room. It's going to be a little different. Uh, I didn't get to go spring, uh, do spring with them, but I think they did a really good job. They uh, showed that what they can do. Um, I think it's only up from here. I think they uh, work really hard, and I think that uh, it's going to be continuous growth um, every game. And Jake Ellis, Utah Statesman. Mm -hmm. um, home support obviously means a lot, um, but you guys were undefeated on the road last year, and it seems like you were able to just channel that negative energy and really show up sometimes. Mm -hmm. Do you think that is something that could place your advantage this week? Yeah, I mean, I personally love road games. I like being uh, in a locker room with 75 guys or 75 plus and all the coach staff, and it's just us. Um, and the few fans that we get that travel with us sometimes. I, I love that environment. I like 20,000 to 100,000 people against you. That's just the, what I like and I prefer sometimes. It make, gets me going and it's really, really fun to play on the road. Um, I think that we had that a really good mentality last year and I think that we can build off that from the guys that were here on the team. And so I think that we just go in there and play our best ball and, and see what happens. And I think that we can do as much as we want to, we play our best ball. And I think that we just got to go and practice on tomorrow and, and get ready to play our best ball. Can you take a second? Uh, 106.9, the fan. And just do some changes on that offensive line coming into this year. How did you assess how they played for you on Saturday? Oh, I thought they played great. Um, obviously, the freshman getting in there played, played awesome. I think there was – yeah, they wanted some – uh, a few blocks back or stuff like that. But overall, I thought we ran the ball really well. That was a big emphasis for this uh, this year is ran the ball really well on first and second down. I thought we did that. Um, and I think they protected really well. I was really pleased. Can you take a second just to reflect on your off season and how rehab went and how you were able to get back onto the field and not miss any game time? Yeah, it's tough. Definitely the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my career. Um, and I've had some injuries. Um, it was taken from right after surgery to walking from two weeks after surgery to three times a day rehab from January all until about two days before the game. So, uh, and I'm still doing it now. I just got done with it a couple hours ago. So uh, it's still continuing. It's uh, going to be a long journey for me um, and just growing in the aspect and just taking it day by day. It's definitely been tough and one of the hardest things I've, I've done, but I wouldn't uh, want to miss it for the world. So you just got to do what you got to do. But Al Lewis from, no. Go ahead, Al. Oh, that's, uh, I was just going to ask you, you, uh, you, you know, in your situation, you've been in a lot of these, you know, big stadiums maybe mm -hmm. down in the South or whatever, but you get this, is it, is it hard to get communications out of the, the, the noise, the way you guys run things, or is it a pretty easy system for you guys to run with noise? Oh, I really, I really don't, whatever system you're in huddle, no huddle. It's uh, when you get a hundred thousand plus, um, especially on a third down, it's, it's extremely hard no matter what system you run. Uh, it's been over the years, you get really anything over 60,000. It's, pretty deafening uh when everybody's screaming at you so uh it's it's tough you gotta really communicate you gotta you gotta pronounce it really well and you gotta have really good communication um in that aspect so it's gonna be tough it always is down there in those big stadiums especially alabama um and we're looking forward to it and it's gonna be fun you just mentioned him. you cut out i can't hear you
Well, I think you put yourself on mute on accident. Yeah, I didn't hear your question. Are there any other questions for Logan? Brian Phillips again, real quick. Mm -hmm. The offensive line, they at times played Pule Allo and Cole Motes as well. Is that by design? Are you still guys, are you guys still trying to work on who the best five are to put out there week in and week out? Uh, sometimes situations happen. Like I know Waylon had a helmet come off and Pule came in the game. Uh, and I remember, and then some, a Cole came out for a few series and stuff like that. It really just depends on the game. Um, stuff happens, guys get dinged up for it. And they need a few plays. Some guys want to get rotated in. So I don't think it's, uh, anything like that. I think that all of those guys can play. I think it's really to our advantage to have a guy that can like Pule can rotate in that center guard, um, and stuff like that. So I think that, uh, I don't think it was really a design um, that I'm aware of, but I think they were a really good job of plugging and playing. I think they played really well. Uh, I really didn't notice, besides Waylon going out with his helmet, I re really didn't notice sometimes the guys rotating and out, which is always a good thing. Last question for Logan. Again, uh, are you aware that there's a couple guys in New Jersey that bet $2,000 on the Aggies to win the national championship? Yeah, I'm aware. I'm about aware. that. I'm aware of that. Uh, it's cool. If it works out for him, it'll be a big payday for him. MJ, Brian Phillips, Big Blue USU Aggie News. How did it feel getting your first career start back in your home state in an Aggie uniform? Uh, yeah, it felt um, amazing. Uh, I haven't had this feeling since high school. <laughs> uh, I think the best feeling about it is uh, knowing that I can play with uh, my family there on the stands. So it was a great feeling. A career day for you, MJ. You know, 10 tackles, a couple tackles for a loss. How did you feel about your performance? What do you think you can build on going forward? Um, sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah, I was just saying it was a, a career performance with it for you with, uh, I believe it was 10 tackles and a couple of tackles for a loss. I'm just wondering how you can build on that performance going forward. Uh, yeah, um, I think the best way to build it is through prep, uh, preparation throughout the week. Um, every day we're in here uh, watching film. We're always trying to build off of what we've done. Um, I think as far as uh, my performance, um, there's still a lot that needs to be worked on. Uh, those, um, alignments, uh, tackling form, footwork, you know, uh, I don't think it's something that you can be perfect in, but something that you can always work on. Hey, Jacob Nielsen, KSL.com, Washington. You've played in a lot of big games and loud stadiums and stuff. Just what's the mentality going into an environment like Tuscaloosa and against Alabama and 100,000 fans? Yeah, uh, I think the mentality is it's just a, another game. Um, we're going to treat it as another uh, football game that we need to execute our assignments. I apologize. I'm not good at interviews. <laughs> Brian Phillips again. Uh, no worries about the no worries about the interviews. You're you're doing a great job so far. <laughs> anyway, um, talk briefly about what adjustments were made in between quarter one, where I believe you gave up somewhere near 150 rushing yards, and in between quarters two and four. They only run for about another 60 to 70 yards. Yeah, um, we were expecting after the first, uh, first quarter, it was a lot of stretch. So uh, the, we made adjustments that we needed to be more patient and more on the, the backside. Um, and then uh, we also had to change up our, uh, our front and our uh, coverage. Yeah, I noticed a lot on Saturday there were, when one guy made a big play on defense, other guys on the team were dancing and celebrating like they were the ones that made the play. Just 
how fun is it to be with this guy, with the, this group of guys, and how do you guys kind of build off of each other's energy? Oh, I love it. That's uh, one thing that we emphasize a lot is uh, bringing the juice. Um, I feel like uh, since I've been here, it's been a more of a brotherhood than it was when I was in Washington. Uh, I feel very comfortable with being in the group of guys around here. Uh, they've welcomed me uh, into into the team, and uh, yeah, I. I I treat them just like they're my brothers. Jake Ellis, Utah Statesman. Uh, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but your first game in Maverick Stadium, uh, kind of more, what was your impression of, you know, the herd, the fans, uh, the environment at, at Maverick Stadium? And how did it compare to, you know, UW and some other places you played? Um, the fans were uh, amazing out here. Um, to be honest, I didn't really... Uh, focus too much on what my surroundings were. It was uh, always having that mentality of we have a game to play. So. Any other questions for MJ? Eric Franson with 106.9 The Fan. Just uh, your early scouting of Alabama and their offense, what do you see out of them? Um, I think we'll uh, hear a lot from the coaches, but they run a pretty similar uh, scheme throughout the or throughout their time of uh, playing football. Um, right now we're still just working on it. <laughs>